Hi, I'm back again talking about September Saturday Sampler. So first thing I'm going to go through the piecing, page 11, for the border blocks, okay? So you really have to pay attention to your colors and what you're doing so that the color scheme on that outside border turns out properly. So you're going to first be making um, three sets of half square triangles. And if you look at what I have in front of me, as I work through it, I do put, I have little stickers and I do mark them as I go, as you change with what you're making. And it really does help you keep track of what you're doing. So I highly suggest that. So the first thing you're doing is making three sets of half square triangles labeled one, two, and three. So you're going to take fabrics 13 and 14, two of each, which are these half square triangles. This is 13 and 14. You're going to take both fabrics and you're going to yield four. You're going to press to the dark. So that's your dark fabric. I have two of them made here. Okay. Half square triangles two are these colors here. And those are fabrics nine and 10. You're going to use six of those colors. You're going to press to the dark. So I pressed to this. I chose that as my darker color and pressed to that. You're going to yield 12 of those and mark those half square triangle two. And then half square triangle three are fabrics four and 13, and you're gonna use four of those. So basically you shouldn't have any of those squares of fabrics that you cut above in nine and a quarter inches left. And I press to the dark there, and I labeled those half square triangle three. So you're going to make all of those, get them pressed. You are not gonna cut them down. You're gonna to go to the next instructions. So for half square triangle one, you're going to take all of those four that you made and you're going to cut them to eight inches. So is there any special cutting for that? No. What you're going to do is you're going to take your square. I have one cut to eight inches, one that's not. So you do need a square ruler of some sort. You're going to take that ruler. You're going to put it right in the corner of your eight inches. You don't need an eight inch square ruler something that's eight inches or larger and I'm gonna it always has a diagonal down the center so I'm gonna place that diagonal on my seam put my eight inch on the left hand corner and the bottom okay and then I'm gonna find that diagonal that matches my seam so I have eight inches on the bottom eight inches on the left diagonal the seam and I'm just gonna cut here and cut across Okay, and I'm going to do that for all my squares, get those squared up, okay? And that's what you do for all of your half square triangles. It says that you have four of those, and then you're going to save those for page 16. Those are for another, another section of your block. So you're going to say, save for page 16 and put those away. All right, so we're going to put those aside. So for half square triangle two which are these. You're going to take your block from point to point. So let me get this out of the way from point to point. And you're going to cut it in half. Okay. And then you're going to label one side A and one side B. And you're going to do that for all 12. So this is what you started with. You're going to get your longer ruler. You're going to cut it down. And I forgot to mention when, before I made this, when I was making my half square triangle, I used my um, Quilter's Magic Rule to line it. It's a little bit short. So, you know, I kind of started and eyeballed it. And I did use a darker, uh, my identity pen or whatever you have and marked on each side because it's a little hard to see with a pencil and it's not gonna ruin it. It's not gonna bleed through your fabric. So I did mark it um, with that when I was uh, marking it for my half square triangles. Okay, so that's your friend in marking these. And I did pin them together before running them through to make my half square triangles. Just moving backwards for a minute. Okay, so for your half square triangle two, you get them all marked A and B. And I put an A on it and a B on it because that's important when you're going to your next step. Okay. So that's half square triangle A and B for two. And now you're in half square triangle. I'm gonna set those aside. In half square triangle three, same thing. Cut them from point to point. 
mark them C and D, okay? C and D right there. And you have eight of those, so you'll cut those all in half just like that and mark those. Okay, so now part three, your border blocks. You're going to take an A piece and one of your triangles that you had from earlier, and they're somewhere here. I have them. I have them somewhere. I've set them aside. I don't know where I put them. They're sitting here. They're sitting here waiting to show you. Oh, here they are. Okay, so you're gonna take an A and you're gonna piece it to one of your triangles, okay? And they are not gonna be the same size. Don't worry about it. Edge to edge, pin it, sew it, okay? And then you're gonna take one of your Bs and sew it to one of your other triangles. They won't be the same size, okay? You're going to press it to the unpieced triangle, okay? And you um, you sew all of those A's and all of those, wait, using A and B sections and 14 triangles, make four of each, four A's and four B's, okay? And then you're going to square these up. So here's an A and here's a B. This is what they look like. And you need to square these to eight inches. Well, how the heck do you do that? Can you do this right off the corner like I showed you the other block? Absolutely not because you have a center and it's gonna be lopsided. So now what you have to do is you have to measure off the center. So what I do, now this one is already at eight inches. I already did it just to show you what it would look like squared down. So what I have to do is, what's, what's one half of eight inches? Well, it's four inches. So I look at my four inches in the center of my ruler. Here it is, and there's that little dot right in the middle. So I line up my diagonal on my ruler. I find my four inch, and I line up my diagonal, which is right in the center there. So you have the center intersection right there. Here it is where there's my line and there's my intersection. So I find that diagonal on my ruler that's right here. Now I got turned around again. So here's my four inch line in my diagonal. And I don't know if you can get up closer on the camera, but you can see that line right there. There's my diagonal and there's my four inch intersection point right there. So that's gonna tell me my eight inches. My eight inch line is here and here. And I'm gonna cut this off here and cut this off here. And then I have a nice little rotary cutter, a rotary spinner, and I'm gonna turn it around the other way. I'm not gonna cut this one because I'm gonna use it tomorrow in my demo, but then I have my eight inches here. So if I had this on here, I'd have this down here. I'd have my eight inches, cut this off, and then turn it so I don't have to move my block and then put my eight inches right on the line here. And my point would line up, my points line up there, and then cut this on the other side. And that's how you line up that block. But if you line it up right on the edge and just cut off eight inches here, then you know your block's gonna be lopsided. So, okay, you're gonna do four A's and four B's, and you're gonna mark it A and B on it so you know what's going on. Okay, and then you're gonna make an hourglass block and you're gonna make eight each of block C and block D. And you're gonna take the remaining A and B sections from your Hasker triangles and all of your C and D sections and you're gonna put them together. And you know how they fit because the dark will go to here and this dark will go to the light. You're gonna put them together and if you press to the dark, they'll, they'll um, nest together and just kind of pay attention to which side is which side so you know which is block C and D. And again, these are large. So you have to cut them down to eight inches. So this one I've cut down to eight inches. So how do you line this up again? 
So I'm gonna put my, again, my ruler down here. I have my diagonal line going across the whole block. I'll find my four and I'll put it right in the center there. This would be my cut for my first eight inches. And then I would just spin my this around or turn your block on your board. Find the other eight inches, line up my diagonal, and then cut it down. And then this one, I you can see on here, I've cut this down to eight inches. So there's my four right in the center and on the diagonal, I've cut that. And then once I've had that cut, I've lined it up on the eight inches and been able to square it up. And you're trying to get those points right in the corner. So now I have my C and D blocks. So now you're just making your units. Unit one is comprised of two D blocks and look at where the lights are sitting. They're on the top and A block. And you're gonna make four of those. And then you need four unit um, twos, a B and two C blocks. And if you wanna see what they look like, you need to look on your color. And this is what the blocks look like. And then of course in the quilt, where are they? They're on the outside. These are sitting in your border. They're in your outside border. So they're gonna be going out here. So they're gonna be using them pretty much at the end when you're putting on your outside border. So that's really cool you'll have those made. Okay, I'll be back for, for one more video to just do the simple inner border block. I'll see you in a few minutes. Hi, I'm back, Marilyn here, finishing up the blocks for September. Just going through, just quickly, the inner geese and accents. We have three fabrics. We've already gone through how to cut them. Um, so you're gonna be making 28 flying geese to finish um, the, this inner border and um, the accents of the geese around the um, eclipse blocks, which we're gonna be making next month. So first you're gonna be making your flying geese. You're gonna make flying geese A, and those involve one set of fabrics, your five and seven. So you're gonna have your fabric seven base and your four fabrics of uh, fabric five. So it's just gonna make four flying geese. And that's what these look like right here. You're, ah, there's, there they're flying away already. Okay, so here's your flying geese. This is what they're gonna look like. And we've made a lot of those already, so you're familiar with those. You're gonna be cutting those to um, square to two and a half by four and a half. And I'm using my wing clipper to do that. And so you're then gonna be making flying geese B. And um, those are gonna be taking your 10 base and um, your, again, your fabric five, and you're gonna be making 24 of those. And those look like this. Okay, so you're making a lot more of those. And again, squaring those to two and a half by four and a half. So when you make your fabric, your flying geese B, you're gonna be putting those together in sets of three. So those look like that. And you're gonna make eight sets of three and put those together. And those are gonna be going around your eclipse blocks when you make those. So you'll have three sets of three around here and there, and then your little corner of, not those, these little corners that fit right in around the corner of those blocks. So you're gonna save those and then put those on, on around your blocks next month, okay? So that's what's happening with those. And then for your, using your 22 and a half inch lengths, you're gonna take these long lengths that we cut, you're gonna cut those down to 22 and a half inches, okay? And then you're gonna be putting your flying geese in the middle here, and you're going to be making four of those, okay? So your border measure is two and a half by 48 and a half inches. All right, and you're gonna be making four of those and your little geese right there. And um, that's it for that. So then you'll be all done, okay? So we'll see you next time. Thank you, bye.